I'm Dylan Radigan. I've interviewed nearly every CEO and most world leaders during the past 25 years. And now I'm bootstrapping, I'm turning my attention to the new CEOs and the irrepressible entrepreneurs leading the next generation of innovation in the world. Welcome back to Tasty Live. I am Dylan Radigan. Time for another episode of Bootstrapping, the segment where we talk to some of the most interesting private company CEOs in the country uh, that are actually, oddly, many of them available for private investment through the Republic platform. But um, the most interesting thing for me is you get your sort of upstream of the creativity uh, in the in the business ecosystem. And that's why I, I do really love this segment. So with no further ado, our next guest is Brian Schuster. The, the bio described you as a visionary, Brian. There was a list of patents and things and things. But so anyway, Brian right now, just not to diminish his illustrious history, uh, is the boss at a company called Otherverse. Otherverse is a platform uh, that stands between the world and the metaverse in a way that basically, as I understand it, Brian, implements active and activations, I would call them, where we're going to stand up this kind of a world. There's going to be this kind of a flow of content and flow of narrative and flow of plot and physical digital so um with no further ado i hope you accept my description which is otherverse as a platform to activate into the metaverse well i'm um, thanks dylan for having me on and that's a, a a good overview sort of description the way that i typically like to describe it myself is you know i got my start on the internet back in the early 90s um, and so I helped innovate the internet as a commercial medium. I really helped it stand up and brought just tens, hundreds of millions of people onto the internet in the original iteration. We look at metaverse as being the same type of um, technological advancement. And what really took the internet from the late 80s being this, you know, tool for academics, tool for government, um, and DOD. brought it to... The, Right, exactly. And brought it to the masses was the innovation of the Mosaic web browser and the capability for people easily to be able to create a website and have them all hyperlink, just interlinked together so that it wasn't one website. You download an app, you access that website, what we would call news groups or something. You know, you download another app for, um, you know, another purpose, email. Here you have the it all mosaic created a dashboard to navigate all the things without having to have all these. It's, it was the it became the dashboard. The fact the, the, the effectively the yes, Netscape right. and office. so right and so that's what we are doing. What we have done for Metaverse, we've created the Xeon browser. We've got search for Metaverse. We've got the tools for people just easily to be able to tilt up their own Metaverse. All of them can look different, feel different, but they all interact, engage. Um, with traffic. And of course, we're building our own metaverse using our own tools and on our own platform as a proof of concept. Okay. So I, 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 I'm going to repeat what you just said to make sure I understand it before we sure. advance. Is it otherverse.com? That's my friend. Is that that you're, if you're Netscape, if you're uh, InfoNet or what I forget, Info, InfoSeek, I think it was. There was a bunch of them early on. I mean, this is a version of that for the metaverse. I'm not, I'm not limiting you to that, but I'm saying that that's one of the features of this. Right. Design. I mean, is that true? So we've been in the space for 20 years now. So if you go to otherverse.com, you're going to go to our classic system, which has been live, you know, for 18 years. And well, what if I just want to know what's old. going on in the metaverse? I just want right. to, I want to. Otherverse.io. Okay. Otherverse.io is our web three next generation metaverse uh, information website. Yeah. Okay. And so if I wanted to then see what's going on in the metaverse, I could, I, my, my, I could, you would give me doors that I could knock on it at otherverse.io that goes to different, well, your metaverse and other worlds of the metaverse. I'm assuming a lot of which you're supporting, produced, curating, um, whatevering. Is that correct? That is correct. We call them sovereigns. Um, those are third parties. They come in um, right now because we're only we're in closed beta testing. Um, we're the ones who are building for these third parties, and we've got very exciting announcements about who those Meaning parties to show are. Use cases. You're demonstrating use case right. value propositions with 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 cured, selected third parties, basically. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then and over the course, yeah. Um, 
uh, early part of next year when we go into open beta, of course, you know, this is going to become much more widespread and, and people will have access. Um, and ha so what is your, so you were saying, like, say, let's just stop here because I'm going to keep going and we won't come back to some of these things. But if, what are you raising money for on Republic right now? And how does that relate to what we're talking about in this discussion? Because I feel like it might be related. Um, so we've built the system. I, I, I've personally spent, well, more than 40 million um, uh, that I put into this project to build out this next generation metaverse. Really, the Raison Republic, by and large, is because I have such a, a, a such a close relationship with users of our c community of our classic metaverse that I wanted to give people an opportunity to invest in the company before I take the company public, which is my intention here next year. Um, so it's not like a typical raise on Republic uh, where we're looking to- It's almost like a marketing uh, thing to get buy-in from your super users. I, you know, that's a great way to put it. Um, uh, it really is like, I want to give them the opportunity. I mean, I don't want somebody to say, well, geez, I was using an Apple product for 10 years and then they offered stock. And then, Rad and then Radigan know? made all the money on the back right. end. They never even heard of the thing. Right. Um, because they've helped us so much. And of yeah. course, you know, I, I want to make this available to anybody that has faith that Metaverse is going to be the next big thing, which it is. <laughs> okay. Well, that's, we're saying, hold on. That's going to be the most Okay. Important. I need to understand what's going on, what you're doing. And then we're going to right. have to then we're going to go to the big talk, but let's get gotcha. through. Let's let us establish the, the the what's happening here, and then we can go philosophical. So absolutely. Um. So the the business is longstanding. You've funded this substantially yourself through prior activity, and right. now you're in a position where you're ready to basically go uh, with a more public product launch over the next twelve months by standing up some of the things we're talking about, including these third parties. Can you tell us who the third parties are? Uh, well, I can tell you the ones that we have publicly. I mean, so we've we've um, brought in a, a major Hollywood institution called um, uh, uh, Legacy um, Inspired Films. Uh, Legacy Inspired Films is a company that has um, connection. It's it's a Web three. It's a new Web three company that connects with. All of legacy Hollywood. So we're bringing in so it's legacy Hollywood IP being right. in the metaverse, right? And they're and they're doing new new film production. So it's new, both a library plus to keep coming, right? Right. So you and got a Hollywood starting, deal. You got to use up a Hollywood deal, which is right. Ex exactly. Okay. What else? Um. Well. It, 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 there's a variety of other um, i think we uh, could do a good car deal for you i think we could get into a luxury car world racing all that of course anyway of i got course. ideas i got ideas but anyway uh, i i, 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 I will say this questions. we're, we're I, I can't announce it until the end of the week um but uh we've got um one of the world's most famous skateboarders we're building a skate you park a sports and a whole, play. you got a sports right? we got a sports um, world Right. Uh, and and we've got um, uh, big comedians. We've got a comedy got a club. Funny world. You got a little right? comedy world. You know, right. I, I'm not hearing cars, bro. I got a car deal for me. We'll talk after. OK, you got it. You got it. <laughs> so, but for this, for, so anyway, congratulations. Obviously, you Thank believe you. that this is the future. Obviously, you have credible standing to help hold that opinion as an expert. Obviously, all the things. Right. With that said. There's many a smart person with many a dollar who's done many a thing that hasn't been right. Myself included. Of course, of course, <laughs> <laughs> of course. And so that's what makes this so interesting because it's sort of a no, there's no answer to the debate we're about to have. Um, and you can believe anything you want and really you get to create it because it may be, it, if it, whether it will or won't be the next that what you what you claim is a function of what we all do now anyway over time and how we, all these things so all like i believe i'm a believer i'm not i'm easy to get over the wall okay use case if you can get me through use case and i'm going to go back to your internet metaphor sure which dod all the things you said academics okay still no use case okay mosaic great that's exciting still eh. I don't know. I'm going to go check the reference at MIT on the patent for the whatever. Maybe three people. I don't know. Boom. Pornography. Right. And all of a sudden I have a use case 
that is in the pr in the primitive scope of humanity, whatever, which is in sort of food, sex, path of least resistance, right? right? Like that's the cadence of a primitive human, food, sex, path of the resistance. So porn, you can't you can't eat from the Internet. And, and, and path of least resistance has revealed itself a thousand ways since we all see it every day. Instagram people, whatever, lots of things. But what's the use case for the metaverse? And is it also derived from the pornography industry in order to, to take hold? So a uh, very interesting question, and I'm going to uh, tiptoe around how I uh, answer with regards to uh, uh, potentially porn. I mean, let's be honest, though. You can roll with the best car thing, the best Hollywood thing, the best sports thing. Great. All great. And people will come. But will right. it become self-energized like a magnet that, that no right. longer needs a push? It will. So, I mean, first of all, I will say we've got we've got multiple of the largest adult entertainment companies and gentlemen's clubs. They're lined up to, uh, oh, they're in the to have sovereigns. Um, but that's not our primary use case. That is certainly, uh, I, but it's I the, know. It creates engagement, as my friend Tom Sosnoff would say, a tasty live. Right. It creates, a, you may not want to buy a crypto or Bitcoin or GameStop or whatever, but it creates, it brings people into the investment world that would never otherwise be there. And porn will bring people into the metaverse that would never otherwise go. Yeah, although I, I would I would step that back from um, porn to say really it's adult engagement. So let me let me tell you what I mean by that. Um, this is not pre-recorded film stuff, right? So in our classic metaverse, it is the most social network you can possibly imagine in a real sense. We've had you know uh, fifty million users, right? So more than eight thousand weddings that have resulted from our classic metaverse because users meet each other in a realistic scenario let's say karaoke or a comedy club or they're at a movie they've got or their friends at your there. skate park they can be at your skate park right they're there with friends they meet another group of friends they're all talking it's a very natural it's very easy it's low barrier to discussion with somebody that you're interested in you can find out information about them from their profile their social media linked um uh materials um you have discussions, you start dating, bam, you can have a spectacular wedding. Okay, As you win. I'll stop outcome. with the porn. I'm trying, I'm right. being provocative. It's well, TV. But, I, but also, to, but I'm accepting, you're, you, I'm, you're not rejecting my point and I'm not rejecting right? yours. I want to move on if I could. Sure, sure, of course. Uh, absolutely. Where it goes around and around. Um, so it, I, I want to ask you about a contingency between blockchain and okay. crypto and the metaverse. Right. And I'm interested in your opinion as to whether the adoption rate in crypto, the compression of gas fees, the acceptance of NFTs, the acceptance of smart contracts as the convention for transaction, that adoption rate, which will have whatever its pace is, and then the metaverse adoption rate, which doesn't require the, that to function, right? Th that's where I'm sort of interested. Can the meta how far can the metaverse go if the adoption rate on Web3 is slower than people hoped? So I think that I would flip that around to say inside of a metaverse, what we discovered early on, long before Bitcoin, I introduced, uh, it's, it wasn't a cryptocurrency because it wasn't cryptographically secured, but we knew that we needed to introduce- But it was a token a, of sorts. It was a digital currency, correct. Because anytime you have large numbers of humans interacting in you know what is- essentially a realistic experience they need to have a medium of exchange a, a unit of account right so we introduced it, this digital currency we've done billions of dollars of transactions we've done many billions of transactions um and it becomes a, ne a necessity in metaverse so what i expect to happen in the way we've designed our tokenomics and the way we've designed our commerce layers there's multiple commerce layers that are built in at the root um, people won't even know that they are in Web3 when they download the metaverse. Let's say Web2 people download the metaverse. They start engaging with it. They automatically have a wallet with our token. They'll be able to swap tokens within that wallet because it's an essential component. If you want to buy clothes, if you want to buy a ticket, if you want to, you know, um, buy a gift for somebody or, you know, rent an apartment. You need, or, you need a mechanism of interaction to, that can right. keep the, the store record keeper for that. Right. Event. And so by default everybody that comes in is ultimately going to be a participant this also creates engagement for what i call 
FNFTs. These are functional NFTs. Um, you know, you can still have engagement for artwork NFTs if you have your apartment or your, your house, right? You might want to hang art. But for sure, if you've got a blockchain NFT that's a cl the clothing item or a hairstyle or an avatar or, you know, a car, for example, a 911, um, then you can um, have that functional NFT live on the blockchain and have it function within one of the sovereigns in the metaverse or within the metaverse itself. And so it really opens up all of, uh, I expect that the adoption rate of Web3 will come through metaverse. That's, and- Do you think you know, metaverse adoption will drive Web3 adoption? Correct. In implicitly because the web3 function will be embedded in the in the in the in the functional nft if you will writ large as through the whole that's thing. right the use building creates it. the user and that right. you sit in an envelope it's you don't see the pipes of the house but that's how the water runs you got it you should you give me it. a job i could be like a good <laughs> sales guy i could get your people fired up messaging hey you know let's talk after the show i need a spokesman <laughs> <laughs> but so yes critical i don't know who knows i i don't know who knows this whole thing sounds like i'm not so sure and so the biggest issue is how long right and let's assume that the it, it ends where we're where we're talking sure, which sure. Logical, whether it's in right. whatever but is that in 10 years five years one year you think you're going public next year all this jazz what do you how are you even you're more informed than anyone how are you setting your situational awareness for setting timing Right. So the way that I look at it, and now I'm going to hearken back to something maybe uh, uh, some people don't even remember. Um, uh, attention spans have gotten so short. Um, do you remember MySpace comes along? And I was remember know, I did the first Mark Zuckerberg interview at CNBC. Hey, eh? and, and that's because nice. I had done the MySpace interview, and I didn't want Mark as a guest because I was like, why do I have this kid? I'm, give, I'm like, get me the CEO of Exxon Mobil. Anyway, right. that's for another day. So I remember. So. So, you know, I, I remember how I got introduced to MySpace, which is a friend of mine told me about it. And I said, not interested. And then a few days later, another friend told me about it. OK, not interested. And then I see Jay Leno is talking about it. And then I see Letterman's talking about it. And I get like 20 more invites and I join. And all of this happens within the course of like a week, right, where it went from nothing. I'd never heard of it to everybody's on it. Um, Metaverse is going to have the same kind of adoption curve, I believe. We are at the point where we're doing closed beta. I had to cut off our. But, so I, but listen, I, I, I agree with your rationale because I was on the right? floor of the stock exchange. We went from analog to digital. And right. The rhetoric and the transition was this is going to be take time and years and blah, right? blah, blah. And with years running before we did it, you know, it was all these, it was right. five years running up. We're going to go digital and the floor right. and listen to the floor and the things and the buttonwood tree and the paper and all this. The first yeah. Monday morning, the first day. So the four yeah. ran on Friday, whatever the Friday was, it was probably over New Year's. Maybe they reopened like the new year was like January 4th or 3rd or 5th or something. 90% of the volume in the first yeah, wow. from, from, from the zero hour. Yeah. It's yeah. gone. And so I believe I, I, I recognize what you're describing, which is that tech shifts are non-existent and then almost absolute in the course of a day or two, a la right. your MySpace example. And your argument is that event is in the time horizon somewhere in the future with Metaverse. And you obviously think that event of that is within the next two years. Oh, for sure. I mean, so we're closed beta now. We'll be open beta early part of the year. Um, and then with the marketing systems that we have in place, with the celebrities that we've got coming in and with um, I mean, I gave you one tiny use case, but, you know, we we just came off of a hugely successful convention. We've got convention floors, trade show floors, you know, conventions are so useful in so you're saying can go a year from now. We're talking Thanksgiving 24. And what's sure. the, what are the odds that we've had the binary, in your opinion? Right. right? It's I, I think it's a sure thing because what's going to sure happen thing is in the next 12 months. Right. Because what, what people don't see is we've put in a decade of work um, of that, and, and we're now ready to unveil it. So um, this is going to be. So I, you, I mean, know, you, have, these are, you know that the product is going to be you, you got I got it. I got it. Right. Okay. Five years ahead of where Facebook is. We're 20 years ahead of where Decentraland is. You know, I mean, we're going to blow up when we come out the gate and it's fully functional. Kaboom. Um uh, and it's as easy to use as a web browser. I mean, you launch it, you use it on your computer, you use it on your tablet, you know, or you have we gotta, a headset. We, we got to make your ticker kaboom. <laughs> All right, let's do that. <laughs>